Hi everyone, today our session will be about the early identification of respiratory hazards. The main contents of this session will be about performing a respiratory hazard evaluation, early identification of patients with infectious respiratory illnesses, early recognition and source control of patients with infectious respiratory illnesses, transportation of suspected or confirmed infectious respiratory illnesses cases, collection and handling of respiratory specimens. It's really significant to have early identification of respiratory hazards. Each healthcare facility should conduct a respiratory hazard evaluation to identify and evaluate the potential exposure of individuals to hazards, the extent of exposures and the consequent selection of measures required for respiratory protection. The evaluation should determine the likelihood of occurrence and the level of exposure, which means that appropriate respiratory protection measures can subsequently be implemented. It's really critical to have early identification of patients with acute infectious respiratory illnesses through respiratory triage and by implementing respiratory pathway, by early recognition and source control of patients with acute infectious respiratory illnesses, and by implementing transportation of suspected or confirmed infectious respiratory illnesses cases and through collecting and handling of respiratory specimen appropriately. Early recognition and source control of patients with acute infectious respiratory illnesses. Each healthcare facility should have a mechanism for the early recognition, screening, testing, and evaluation of respiratory infectious disease cases particularly those transmitted through a droplet and airborne methods of transmission. As we mentioned earlier that we have to have implement specific um, transmission-based precautions such as droplet and airborne transmission-based precaution. In this slide, we have a color-coded, red color-coded droplet precaution that explained for the all healthcare workers in bilingual language, the type of measures that must be implemented for the patient who are under droplet isolation precaution. In airborne transmission-based precaution, we have to follow a specific measures that are written in bilingual, color-coded blue for the type of patient who is under airborne transmission-based precaution. It's really significant to implement a respiratory triage as a method for the early recognition of respiratory illnesses, infected respiratory illnesses, and for the source control of the patients. Respiratory triage is a simple screening method for early detection of patients with respiratory symptoms. It's a triaging scoring system applied to alert healthcare workers in emergency department and hemodialysis unit for the possibility of occurrence of respiratory infections with particular pathway for those patients. Respiratory triage and respiratory pathway are intended to be applied mandatory for healthcare facilities receiving patients with suspected or confirmed infectious respiratory illnesses. We have a specific required infrastructure to implement the respiratory triage effectively. Desk or station at the first point in the ER entrance. Ensure the availability of medical mask and alcoholic hand drop solution at respiratory triage desk and the assigned healthcare worker should ask a patient with respiratory symptoms to wear a medical mask and practice in hand rubbing effectively before entering to the respiratory pathway. There is attention posters about the mandatory pass through the respiratory triage area. We have a specific area called respiratory pathway waiting area. It's a separate area used only for suspected respiratory cases with a good ventilation. Waiting area should be kept free of excessive equipment or furniture. Respiratory waiting area should be provided with chairs, easy to be cleaned, fixed to maintain a safe social distancing with distance between them 1 to 1.2 meter. Educational materials such as posters, screens, about the significance of respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette. Hand hygiene supplies tissues and ordinary waste receptacles. In 
each healthcare facility, we have a specific pathway for the respiratory cases that going to lead the patient to the respiratory clinic. This is a specific clinic in the respiratory pathway in ER for examination of patients with respiratory symptoms according to the screening in respiratory triage. Respiratory clinic should be provided with hand hygiene supplies such as alcoholic hand drop solution, hand washing sink facility with accessories. After clinical assessment by the physician, will decide if the patient meet the case definition or not of some of respiratory illnesses. Accordingly, if the need swap will be directed to the negative pressure isolation room, if not available to a single room with a portable HEPA filter should be used. We have to follow a specific infection prevention and control measures while transporting of a suspected or confirmed infectious respiratory cases. Avoid moving and transporting patients out of their rooms unless medically necessary. Use designated portable chest imaging, such as chest X-ray machine. If a patient transport is necessary, use a predetermined transport pathway or roads with less traffic to minimize exposure for the staff, for the other patients and the visitors. During transportation, the patient should be asked to wear a surgical mask all the time if clinically possible and follow respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette instructions. Color-coded transportation card must be used all the time during transportation. Collecting and handling of respiratory specimens. Respiratory samples such as nasopharyngeal, oropharyngeal, or sputum samples. These samples should be done in a negative pressure room or a single room with a portable HEPA filter if the negative pressure room is not available. We have two methods for the collection of upper respiratory tract specimens such as oropharyngeal and nasopharyngeal and nasopharyngeal wash or aspirate, and another method for the collection of lower respiratory tract specimens. Collecting and handling of respiratory specimens, particularly for the lower respiratory tract specimens, such as sputum, tracheal aspirate, bronchi alveolar lavage, fluid or pleural fluid. It's recommended that upper or lower respiratory sample should be performed in a negative pressure room or a single room with a portable certified HEPA filter. The door always must be closed all the time while in use. The floor should be made of material that can be cleaned easily and such as in vinyl and without any cracks. Ideally, the furniture should be made of steel or another material that is easy to clean and disinfect. We have a specific infection prevention and control measures required in the, the rooms that only designated for collecting and handling of respiratory samples. Hand washing basin equipped with a liquid soap and paper towels or alcoholic hand rub dispensers. We have to have a personal protective equipment available and accessible all the time. We need to ensure that environmental cleaning and disinfection through using the spray or wipes always available and implemented. Medical waste containers with a medical waste bag should be available inside the respiratory specimen collection room. All healthcare workers should be trained about the proper use of PPE and various techniques of respiratory sample collection. Thank you so much for attending this session. And if you have any questions or inquiries, please don't hesitate to contact us at any time.